Hello and welcome to another exciting but slightly late Breakfast with Unity. The show that is sometimes late but always great. So what we're going to be doing is um, we're going to be doing a pretty simple one this time with Follow Mouse. But I'm going to be using Screen to World Point and that's actually the more important part of this. I, 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 there's been, I've seen people get jammed up on this one because it's a little bit weird how you have to use it. There are some good examples online. There's a lot of bad examples. Unity's own documentation is not is an excellent example of a bad example, um, and we're going to kind of play with it a little bit. So it's, it's going to be a little bit more in depth than just um, just getting it to follow the mouse. First, we're going to do the basics, though. So we're going to just uh, we're going to create a sphere, and we're going to have the sphere go ahead and um, move around when you move the mouse around. So I'm just going to put it at zero zero. We're going to put the camera at zero zero though it doesn't have to be, and we're going to move it around when we do some of our examples. And I'm going to create a light just so that our sphere looks a little bit better. So um, I'm just going to keep it at the same distance. Um, it'll all be good. And um, so we're going to create a C Sharp script called follow mouse. And this script is going to just take a public, um, we're going to start with a uh, well, actually, we, let's not start with anything. Let's just let's just start typing stuff real quick. So all we're going to do an update first is we're just going to use um, screen camera screen to world point. This takes a point. Oh wait, screen to world point. Uh, yeah, this takes a point in screen space, which is um, the space in pixels. So it's your actual pixel position on the screen and puts it into the world. Now the key to this, this tricky, and they do mention it. Um, they uh, the Z position is in world units from the camera. So you want to give this a value in the Z that represents how far away from the camera you want the object to end up. So uh, we're just going to pass in, we're not gonna worry about that right now, but we're gonna just pass in something and show that this is important. So uh, we're gonna do screen, uh, sorry, an update, all we're gonna do is camera, sorry, big camera dot uh, main dot screen to world point and we're just going to pass in for the vector three position we're just going to pass an in input dot get mouse position or just mouse position this is actually a vector three but the, the third element will be zero in it so we're just going to hit save on this and we're going to hit play and actually we're going to put this on the sphere and then hit play look i remembered and i'm going to move my mouse around and nothing's going to happen at all. Why did nothing happen at all? Hmm. I did put it on the sphere, right? I'm not crazy. Follow the mouse on the sphere. Oh, this doesn't do anything at all. Um, I need to actually assign this to a position. So transform dot position equals. Yeah, that was that was. Yeah, that example really doesn't work. So we're going to hit play, and what's probably going to happen is the sphere is probably going to disappear. And it's, this is confusing. When people start using this script the first time, this is usually the first way that you use it, and you're like, why is this not working? What's actually happening is it is repositioning the sphere. It's just the sphere's position is exactly on the camera, which isn't particularly useful. Uh, and the reason for that is the distance that is trying to put it into the scene is zero because the mouse look thing is, is zero. So in an example you can find online, someone mentions this, and the way that they solve it is they create a, a well, this is this is JavaScript, but they create a vector three mouse position, and then they change the Z because mouse position is a vector three, so you can just do that and you can change the Z and then throw that into camera screen to world point. So let's try that real quick here. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a public float distance equals, let's give it a meaningful default distance, let's do 1.0f, um, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing, we're just going to do vector3 dot, or sorry, vector3 um, new uh, mouse position equals that, and then mouse position dot z equals distance, and then we do this on just the new mouse position that we have here, the variable that we just created that has a Z value that's useful for this function. So when we hit play this time, we should have a sphere really close to the screen that moves around to the mouse. Cool, that's what we'd expect. And we can readjust the distance here to change how far away it ends up from the camera. 
And that's all well and good. Um, now, occasionally you run into situations where you don't really want to base it on a distance from the camera. Um, maybe the camera moves around or things change a little bit and you want something to kind of stay in a particular plane or, 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 or work it a slightly different way. And, um, and there's a couple ways you can do this, and I don't see many examples online showing you how to. So I'm going to teach a couple of little vector tricks on how to, how to do this stuff. So one of the, the, the most, the, the layman approach that you might do Say you wanted to create follow mouse, but you didn't want to specify a distance. You rather would have the object specify its distance by itself based on its initial distance from the camera. Um, you could do this in a way by doing um, by doing a um, uh, by just getting the magnitude of the difference between the point and the camera. So let's take a look at that method real quick and see what happens. So we're going to uh, make this so that it doesn't just, you don't just specify a distance, it just automatically, or actually, let's create a bool, let's just make this more functional. So public bool, um, use, um, use um, camera distance. Um, so, so what we can do here is we can create, we can figure out the distance based on the current position versus the camera's current position. So transform.position minus camera.main.transform.position. This dot, um, what is it called? Magnitude. This is the length of the vector between our object and the camera. So we're going to use this as the distance. So we're going to do uh, float distance equals. Um, Sorry, if uh, if use camera distance, we'll default this to false. It's false. Um, if you use camera distance, then we we're gonna call it. Um, we're gonna do float um, actual distance. And so if you use camera distance, then we will do actual distance equals transfer no position. Otherwise, else we will make actual distance equal to distance. So now we can still use our distance variable if we aren't setting this to true. Um, in a perfect world, we'd probably want to create an editor script that would make it so that the uh, inspector doesn't show the distance option when we have this checked, but that's outside the scope of this program. Uh, and we haven't actually done that on the show before. That's something I'm going to have to do some more editor script stuff at some point in the future. So this should... Um, so we're going to use actual distance now here. So if we hit save and we hit play... Sorry. All compiler errors have to be fixed. What did I do wrong? I didn't put a semicolon. Save. So we hit play. And right now it'll do exactly the same thing it was doing before. It goes to distance one because that's what it's set to. If we set it to, however, use camera distance, you'll see that it looks like it's kind of working. Oh, wait, no, we just did some really bad things. So the reason this has some problems is because we've changed the position and it keeps... Wow, that got really big really quick. Um, so let's um, use initial camera distance. Let's call it that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have actual distance as a private float here. Um, and we will just, we don't need this anymore because it's global. And we're going to grab this and put it into start. This will be a little bit safer. The problem was we were getting slight precision errors and well, evidently big precision errors. Or maybe I was doing something completely wrong, but we'll see how this actually goes. So if we hit play now, yeah, that still didn't work. Oh, because I didn't have this checked. Check mark, use initial camera distance. And we have it following the mouse. And it is at the distance that it was from the camera initially. And this could be useful if you just want to set things up in a plane and you have things that you need to set up and stuff. You could also do this using the raycast technique like we did in the... Um, uh, click to move and just not use clicking. You can just not detect the mouse button. Just always update it to the mouse position. That would work too. But this this will work. But this is actually technically slightly wrong. And the reason this is wrong is if we go into the scene view 
and we look straight up at it, you can see that this is on the zero zero line, right? And we bring the game view so, so that we can see both at the same time. If we hit play, you'll see that the you'll see that it's working exactly perfectly. Um, maybe there's not enough of a difference here to see it. Oh, initial camera distance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This will this will work. Uh, sorry, it was my other example that was going to do a curve thing. So this actually works, but it doesn't work in every case. So if we were to move the, the sphere so that it is not centered on the screen at the start and hit play, you'll see that the sphere will now be further back than it was at the start. You see how the, it, that moved forward a little bit over here? I can't move my mouse and show it at the same time, but it's forward of that zero point. And the reason being is the distance here is using this vector, which has a longer distance than this vector. And this is the one we actually want for doing this automatic calculation. So how do we get this vector from this vector? Well, we can use a sweet little tool called vector projection. And vector projection projects a vector onto another vector and is built into Unity like most vector operations. Uh, most useful vector operations are already in Unity for you to use. And so all we have to do is project this vector onto the forward vector of the camera and we will have the actual distance. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do vector three um, uh, object, I'm going to call it two object vector equals, and then we're going to grab these two components. Ah. Uh, uh, okay. Copy and paste skills failing me. So we get that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to project that onto the original. And I'm just going to use the, um, actually we'll create another vector three. Didn't have to, we could reach assign it to the original, but we're going to call this, um, uh, um, linear distance vector equals two object vector. So this is the vector that represents right here. And we're going to project it onto, so we need to do vector three dot project two object vector. And we're going to project it onto the camera main camera dot main dot transform. Sorry. Dot dot transform dot forward and um, and then finally we use linear distance vector dot magnitude to get our actual distance so if we save this and hit play now when we move it it stays in that plane and it will forever stay in that plane now, if we move the camera around at this point, it won't it won't stay a distance from the camera because it just grabs it at the start. But this is a really common case if you have a fixed camera game, and this this will work no matter which orientation your camera is, and it will work no matter where the the object is positioned initially. And we'll just use the object's depth at that point to determine where it can move. And so, so this is a way that you can use that. And uh, I, this is actually the main reason I wanted to show this is I just wanted to show Vector3 Project as a good example for, for a projection. We haven't used it too much in the show. It's super useful in certain cases. This is one of them. So, um, so just one more tool in the toolbox. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully that helped you out. Hopefully there's something useful in there for you. And hopefully screen to world point is a little bit easier to use now. Um, and maybe you'll use a vector project. Maybe that will solve the problem. Maybe you're like, oh, how did I, how do I get this vector? And maybe that will be the solution that you need. So hopefully, hopefully something will be useful in there. If you have any questions, please email me pushypixels at pushypixels.com. You can also tweet me at Drakfire. That's D-R-A-K-F-Y-R-E. Please donate. Patreon.com slash Coping with Unity. We really need your support. And uh, thank you very much. You guys have a great one. And I'll catch you tonight with more of our Diablo-esque game, Scape, that we're working on. I think that I've got some pretty exciting stuff to show you, though we are going to be skirting into Unity Pro. Um, just war forewarning, everything that we do shouldn't affect the gameplay, so all this stuff should still work even if you don't have Pro. Um, but uh, but I want to actually kind of stretch our wings uh, a little bit and make something really cool so that we can... Because most of our projects we've made so far, like if you show them to just a random person, they'd be like, yeah, that's cool, but it looks bad and stuff. But I want to make something that looks good for once. So um, anyway, you guys have a great one, 
and uh, I'll catch you tonight.